This is the 10-inch Helion. Is it the ultimate long-range FPV drone? Buckle up as we explore how the Helion has changed the way I fly and we'll go through the features that make the Helion stand out. Welcome to a world where the sky isn't the limit, it's the cold hands. In this video, we'll dive into the four chapters that cover what I think are the most important in long-range FPV. <laughs> Dude, The design of the Helion is very unique and it stands out with blue lights and the sleek canopy. I can tell that a lot of effort has been put into the build quality and overall structural integrity. To make a solid 10 inch platform you can't just simply make the arms on a 7 inch longer. That can cause bad oscillations and it's going to be impossible to tune. The Helion has thick 8mm double arms and it's super rigid. Oh. <laughs> Here you can see the size difference between the Helion and the 7 inch Chimera. Now it's the first I've seen an antenna placement like this on any FPV drone. In spite of it being a little bit awkward when mounting the battery and holding it from the top shell, I was super happy with the signal coverage on the longest flights I've tested. One of the best features is that the canopy can be opened up with just two screws, and that's so convenient. But the drawback is it can be inconvenient making quick changes on beta flight or accessing the SD card slot on the O3 air unit, having to remove both antennas and cover. On the inside here, you can see I got help from Mr. Babang to coat everything with worry-free, which is a must when living in Lofoten. The thing I value the most when it comes to long range is of course battery endurance and flexibility. And how both efficient and powerful it can be. Because the wind and weather in the north can be so extreme and unpredictable, it's crucial for me to fly with huge LiPo batteries. Also the heavy weight helps it not being thrown around like a ragdoll. I get a solid 16 to 20 minutes flight time when climbing mountains on a 5200 milliamps battery. And that is amazing. I will therefore often land before it runs out of juice because my hands are freezing cold. You can also mount a Lion battery, but that could probably get you over 30 minutes flight time easily. But when the wind and turbulence can be strong, LiPo batteries provide that well needed punch and speed. It's also a huge benefit for me that the same batteries are used for sin lifters. The Jumeirah 7 and even the Bob 57 can also be mounted with a huge 45,000 milliamp LiPo, but it's not ideal. It handles very sluggish with all that weight and dive recovery is not the best. I would first think that the Helion is too big to bring with me on trips, but I have to say it's been a joy to take with me on adventures. I'm used to going on trips with a 6 inch bob, having to take lots of batteries with me. But with the Helion, it was not much more hassle bringing it with me, even though it's almost twice the size. Of course the batteries are more heavy, but with the extra flight time I get, it's totally worth it. Another point of practicality is that it just covers so much more ground with the Helion. Instead of thinking I have to fly that one part of the ridgeline, fly back, change batteries and get back up to fly the rest, the 10 inch Helion can just fly the whole range several times. And that is for me super valuable. The 
Helion, for me, is a game changer in terms of flight performance, especially when you compare it to a Chimerian Bob. Its larger frame size and props gives a flight experience that is very stable and solid. One way I would describe it is that it feels like flying with wheel steady or rock steady turned on. It's so smooth, but it takes some time to get used to. The other most notable feature is its agility. Despite its size, the Helion maneuvers with precision that caught me by surprise. Whether it's making sharp turns or complex lines, the responsiveness is top-notch, even in challenging windy conditions. I fly more confidently with the Helion. It is so stable in the air and it holds its position exceptionally well, making it ideal for capturing cinematic shots. And I think the stability doesn't come at the cost of speed. It cruises at a calm 70 to 80 kilometers an hour with my normal flying style. And it's capable of quick bursts of speed when needed, making it perfect for fast moving subjects. It maintains its position with minimal drift, which is crucial when flying long range and needing to stay focused on the line. This precision feels like a step up from other models where slight breeze can make it drift when following a ridge line. When descending vertically, the Helion maintains its composure and recovers smoothly without wobbles or instability. This is fantastic when filming high-speed descents. I will say overall the flight characteristics of the 10-inch Helion make it a long-range king. It's a combination of stability, agility and precision that opens up a new realm of possibilities, especially in the landscapes of northern Norway. In conclusion, I think the Helion is a remarkable FPV drone that stands out from everything else. But do most people really need a 10 inch for long range? If you value the steady and efficient platform that can carry any heavy battery with ease, for anyone looking to push the boundaries of long range FPV, especially in a demanding environment, the Helion is for you. Walk solid. Can't go wrong, man. Can't go wrong with it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and it would mean the world to me if you subscribe or write any questions you have below and I'll try to answer all of them. See you in the next video. Flying this should be straightforward. Plug it 